In this video, we'll discuss how to find the domain of a rational function. So remember that a rational function has the form of a fraction, where the top and the bottom of the fraction are both polynomials. Some examples of rational functions would look like this. 2x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 7. So again, the top and the bottom are polynomials, so that's a rational function. Keep in mind that constants are polynomials as well. So something that looks like 5 divided by x squared plus x plus 3 is also a rational function. Even though the top of that fraction is just the number 5, that's a polynomial. It just happens to be a boring polynomial. Similarly, polynomials themselves can be thought of as rational functions. So if I had something that looked like x squared plus x cubed divided by 6, Technically, that's also considered a rational function, although since it's a polynomial and we understand how polynomials work, we're not really going to be focusing too much on rational functions that look like that. So what's the domain of a rational function? Well, keeping in mind that when we think about domain, it's easier to think about what things we can't do, because the domain says what are all the values of x that we are allowed to plug into this function. So to think about that, we want to think about the things that we're not allowed to do. And since we have a fraction, the main thing that we're not allowed to do is to plug 0 in for the denominator of a fraction. So what we want to make sure we have in our domain is that we exclude all values of x that make the denominator 0. So the domain of a rational function will be all values of x except those that make the denominator 0. Now let's just look at a couple quick examples. In this case, we want to find the domain of this rational function. And it really doesn't matter what the numerator is. We want to focus on the denominator. And we want to say, what values of x make that denominator equal 0? x squared minus x minus 6. When does that equal 0? Well, that's a quadratic equation. So we can either factor or use the quadratic formula. This one's pretty easy to factor. We get x minus 3 times x plus 2. And we know that that gives us two solutions, x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. But remember, those are the values that we have to exclude. We want all real numbers except those. So even though those are the solutions to this equation, those are the numbers that we have to throw away. So our answer to this question is all real numbers except x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So make sure that you make this last step and exclude those numbers that you got as your solutions. That's our answer here. One more. Once again, we have a rational function, and conveniently, the denominator of this fraction has been factored for us. So if we want to know which values of x make this bottom polynomial equal 0, well, since it's factored, we can read those off immediately. We can tell that x equals 3 is going to make the bottom 0, x equals negative 5 is going to make the bottom equal to 0, and x equals negative 1. All of those are solutions to the equation, when does the denominator equal 0? But again, just like in the previous problem, those are the numbers that we have to exclude. So our answer to the question is all real numbers, except x equals 3, x equals negative 5, and x equals negative 1. Those are the numbers that we cannot plug into this function. We can plug in anything else, but not those three numbers. And that's our solution.